that. I just wanted to show you a couple of, 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 uh, of projects that we had completed in our shop recently. And so if you come into our shop, this is the wall that you would see that would demonstrate uh, kind of our portfolio of work. All of the, all of the frames on this are water gilded with real gold, and so it shows a number of different techniques. Um, and, and that would include hand carving. It includes a, 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 a technique called scrofito, which is basically scratching, uh, scratching uh, shapes into the gold. And also another method, which is called granito, which is actually punching wood and, and creating designs with a punch and a scratching tool. It also shows uh, a compo ornaments, which I'm going to also demonstrate here. Here's me. I'm doing something. So I'm gilding that. Um, we're very often asked to replicate an original frame. So a painting will come into a museum's collection, and it does not have the original frame on it. So the curator does some research, finds old photographs, and has found uh, the painting in its original frame. So this is a, this is a, a painting from one of our museum clients. Um, the painting didn't have a frame on it. The curator went out and thought that, found that black and white, and that's all we had to make, uh, uh, to, to, to draw out a three-dimensional design for a frame this particular picture. This picture is huge. It's about five feet square. And so uh, what we were able to do with, in consultation with the curator then was that we drew the profile of what we thought this frame was. And so this is based on some, um, uh, this, this, this uh, profile here is based on research that we did about what was common at the time. And so we, we, we saw that it was pretty darn close to what we were looking at. And then so we drew this out, got the curator's approval, and then with his approval, we had our mill make a knife that would make this shape. And we had links of this molding then made. Um, once that's made, then we join it together, and then it's our problem then to make the ornament on it. And uh, some of this was easy and some of it wasn't so easy. Um, this one was quite easy, uh, but this one we could not find. What you do is you go through catalogs and you find uh, decorations, frame decorations in catalogs, and um, you can buy them. Uh, some of them you can't find, so you have to make it. And that's what happened in this case. So we had to sculpt this out of a, uh, an epoxy material. And then what we did was we were satisfied with the general shape of this, and then we made a, a mold out of it, and we cast it onto the eventual frame in the end. And this is, in fact, the, the mold that we used so that when we built the, 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 the real frame, which is now in the museum's collection, um, we, we were able to cast that element back onto all four corners there. This element was quite easy because we were able to buy it. Um, there are companies uh, which sell something called compo ornaments. And that is, that's this thing right here. Uh, this comes flat to us in our, when we buy it. And um, it's made out of kind of a gluey clay stuff. And um, um, when you steam it, it becomes pliable and you can bend it around things. The glue is also activated so it sticks when you lay it down. So all we had to do in this case was to bend this thing around the curve and then it was there. So we were in, we were in good shape. Steam. We have a little steam table that does that. Um, this is an example. This one right here is an example of hand carving. So this is a this is a molding that we uh, that we have made in our mill.
but it's completely rounded on top. And um, we actually made this one for the Owsley Museum. It's around one of the TC Steel paintings, I think, in the gallery right now. And so this, what, all of this design was hand carved into um, the eventual frame and then water gilded. Uh, if you look at this closely, you can see that um, parts of it are burnished, so there is a mirror finish on the gold in some places, and in other places the, the, the gold is a little bit duller. Every museum has a frame that looks like this. Um, you, you may have frames like this at home that look like this. They've suffered from humidity or um, uh, heat, mold, all kinds of bad conditions. And uh, the gilding starts to fall off of it. Sometimes the elements get uh, crunched and fall off. And so um, we're able to restore that. So this is an example of a frame that's um, sort of half done so that you can see the before and after. And what we do, we do it the same way we, we made this, um, this, which is that we make a cast of one of these corners that is complete, and then uh, we make a mold of that, and then we cast it onto the, the incomplete version. Once, uh, once we have it gilded and we're ready to uh, finish it off, then uh, a decision is made about how we want uh, how dark we want it to look, how old we want it to look. Do we want it, do we want it to have like, had a nice life, a rough life? And so this is the, actually the funnest part. So this is an example. I wonder if we can get the, uh, it's going to be very hard. You, you have to see this for real maybe. But these are, this is an example of three frame corners that are exactly the same but they have different lives. This one is the oldest. because It's heavily rubbed. It's got a lot of antique um, on it, and we've also scratched it and punched it and um, dragged chains across it um, to make it look like it's had a life to it, and that's the ambition for that. And so we have a choice. We can make it look, you know, 300 years old, or we could make it look like it's 50 years old, which would be this one. I know this is hard to see. Um, but there are three or four things that we do to distress things, to give it age. Um, one is the rubbing of it to make sure that that, um, that red bowl shows through. And the reason that red bowl shows through on an old frame, on an old antique frame, is that the cleaning person has gone over it for centuries with a feather duster. And it, rub, it takes a little bit of the gold off over years and years and years. And it gets a deeper and deeper red as it gets older. Um, so we have that. We have the ability to rub. We have the ability to actually take a, an X-Acto knife or a box cutter sometimes, and we make scratches in the gold itself. And the reason we do that is because gold expands and contracts at a different rate than wood. And so all of that, uh, different levels of expanding and contracting causes the gold to crack. And so we could mimic that by actually taking a box cutter and scratching a scratch into it. Um, another thing we use is a punch, which would allow us to mimic wormholes. And so you can see uh, on some of these here that there are a couple of punches around the seams. And it's really important that they're around the seams. If you ever see, if you see a frame, I mean, the, what I mean by seam is the join of the corner. And usually if you see uh, a frame and it has punches out in the middle of the frame, it's been faked. And the reason you know that is because worms like glue, and so they migrate and they, they do their business around the joins of a frame. So you have to be careful. Uh, and then the other thing we do is we apply a layer of fake dust 
to, uh, to the frame. So that's usually some kind of uh, brown milk paint is what we use. It's really a very wispy kind of paint and we can brush it on and then we wipe most of it off uh, in order to make it look like it's accumulated a lot of dust over time. Uh, this is that eventual frame. You can see how big it is. Uh, and so this was the day that it got shipped out to the client. Yeah, the, the, this is our gilding shop. So we've got really got two gilding tables there. Uh, as you can see, there's, a, there's a, another large frame on the far one there. Um, but this, this particular one was so big that we had to, we had to work in, in a different room. Um, this, was, this was just to show the client. We had to work it in a, in a place that was really not very, <laughs> it wasn't very uh, hospitable to showing it off. Um, we replicate frames, so again, the, this is another example of that. A uh, client gave us a picture there on the left, and then that's our reproduction um, of that profile on the right. The client said, now the one on the left is really in rough shape. And we, when he sent us the picture, we were like, oh, this is going to be great fun. We're going to be able to drag it behind a car. <laughs> and... Um, so the client said, no, I want a nice, not, wanted to have it a nicer life. So we, um, we distressed it uh, a little more reasonably. We actually did that once. We dragged it behind a car. But that was a special client. That, um, not, n almost nobody wants that. Not me, me either. I don't want that either. Uh, this is another uh, replication job. So the one on the left is, the, is actually a frame that exists. And all of those elements there in the corners uh, were hand carved. Uh, that's the, actually the carving of that particular frame, and it's really done quite simply. We just we just draw a rubbing of the of the original carve, and then we transfer that drawing onto the new frame, and that's what we use to carve. Uh, here's another museum client. This is a fabulous. Rococo frame. Um, so this is uh, uh, about 1780s, 1770s, something like that. And this has every gilding frame maker's trick imaginable. So uh, it was really great fun to work on. Um, and uh, so you'll, you'll see that there's lots of gilding that's fallen off there, uh, especially along that top rail. And um, this is, a, this is a picture showing before and after on a major crack that was in the, in the corner of the frame. So this was a crack that went all the way through uh, the, the miter joint. And so we fill that up with a epoxy material and then uh, make it seamless. <coughs> uh, this is the crown of that frame as well. There was a, uh, a little plume that got... Uh, bumped off over the years, so we had to recreate that. You can see that on the right. We're um, pushing that back on there. Hope everybody can hear me. Um, and this is me gilding that frame, I guess. You've seen the process, so you don't need to see that again, I guess. And then that's the eventual picture. This was one that just uh, was just brought to us about two weeks ago, or I'm sorry, about two months ago. And this is a, an example of one that was fairly simple and we were able to do it in about four weeks. Uh, but you can see that there were elements busted off uh, there. This is a little bit of a closer look. There were high spots uh, along the outer red edge that had bump, bump, been bumped off uh, over time. Uh, so what we do is we make a mold of that. That's that thing that's at the bottom there. Uh, and then we cast that epoxy material right onto the frame with that shape uh, embedded in it. Then we place the, bolt, the, the clay. That's the clay layer that you're seeing there, which I've burnished and it's ready to be gilded. Uh, this is hard to see because, well, it's not so bad. Uh, but you can see where the raw gold is there. Um, on the replaced elements. 
Uh, and that's a closer look at it, so I'm burnishing it there. I wanted those highlights to be bright. And then that's the, that's it, that's the completed frame. So um, hopefully as integrated as, uh, as, as, as the client wanted it. This is one that took forever. Um, and so this is the opposite end of the spectrum. Uh, client, this is another museum client, brought this to us. It had a number of these, uh, of these uh, very large protruding elements were broken off because it had fallen off the wall. And um, so luckily the client had all of the broken pieces and so we brought them all back and then we uh, re-adhered them um, and then we had to uh, uh, put uh, gesso putty material um, on all of the creases so that those, those cracks would go away that were the result of the replacement of the piece. And then we did something so arrogant, uh, I could hardly believe it as a museum person. Um, I did something that I was very surprised that I was able to do, which is that I painted it. And what had happened to this frame over its lifetime was that it had, it was originally water gilded and um, it apparently had gotten damaged and somebody had painted it gold. That's what, that's what it is there. So it's kind of radiator paint at that point. And it was, it was dead, it was absolutely dead because there was no dimension to the surface. There was no red underneath like you want. Um, there, and, and there was no um, antiquing or life to it on the top of it. So usually when you're looking at a quality frame, you're looking at layers of decoration and material that show through and become transparent. It gives it depth and dimension. Um, if it's just paint, then it's totally flat. And... Um, really dead. So that's what the state of it in this case. So what we were trying to do is we were trying to recreate all of those layers. So we paint, first started painting it black. We did a little archaeology on the, on, the, on the frame and we found that it would had black clay on it originally. It was not red clay like we're using here. So we painted it the same color. And then we started to re-gild it um, in the low areas. And the reason we started it this way is because we wanted to emphasize more dimension. And what, what we wanted to do, since this was an oil gilding job, the, the, the client, um, it, it would have been fabulously expensive to water gild this. Um, so we opted for an oil gild, and that eliminates the ability to burnish. And so what we were trying to do is mimic burnishing. So we we gilded the low areas, and then we, uh, we put a lot of color on that, those low areas so that they would be different from the high areas. That's what we were trying to attempt to do. I think we did a pretty good job. So that's what we're doing here. And then once we got all of that gilded, we started to gild the, the upper layers. The, 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 the star of the show in this frame are those protruding heads and the actual circle that goes around the painting. And so those were the parts that we left bright gold uh, in the eventual frame. So this is now it when it's got uh, all of the variation of gold that's on it. And hopefully you can kind of see that um, some of that gold is a little more amber than others. You can kind of see in the low areas it's a little more yellow and in the top areas it's more pale. That was very much on purpose and it was an attempt to mimic the burnishing uh, of the gold. So this is the, this is the frame hanging in the museum. It, um, uh, there's a whole story about the frame and, and so they wanted a mirror in it and this is now in the foyer of the, of the museum. But this is the detail, this is the last slide I've got. Uh, this is the detail of one of the corners and um, so you can, if you're looking, if you, I don't know if you can see this very closely, but you can see that I've rubbed it and it has like some black showing through in places, especially where those 
little pods are along the along the the top edge. Those little uh, open pods. There's some black that that are showing through, and then uh, that's the part that was pale gold, and then the underside that has all of the punch work. Um, that is a darker color. It's meant to mimic uh, different levels of color. 